I'm Michael Fullilove of the Lowy Institute and I'm here with a guest of the Lowy Institute, my friend Richard Flanagan, one of Australia's finest novelists. Thank you very much, Richard, for coming to speak to us today. Oh, thank you, Michael. Um, can I ask you about this magnificent novel that you've written, The Narrow Road to the Deep North, which I found uh, formidable and powerful and compelling and very moving. Um, what, why did you write this book and what's it about? Um, and my, f uh, my father was a prisoner of war um, of the Japanese and he was worked on the, uh, the infamous Burma Thai Death Railway and uh, I'd written several novels and at a certain point I realised I'd kept returning to the story trying to write it and, um, and failing and uh, my father had grown old and frail and uh, I realised I, I had to return to it and finish it, um, that it was really the book I had to write if I was ever to write another book. So it's, um, it, it tells the story of one man who ends up a leader in one camp of Australian POWs and t follows him through his life. Uh, but it also follows through their various lives, some of the prisoners, and, um, and also some of their captors, the Japanese officers, the Korean guards and um, tries to build up a picture of war, love, guilt, um, memory, and, uh, and all that strange chaos, I suppose, that, that haunts us all. And the central character, Dorigo Evans, is a, a really memorable figure who I guess is based partly on or draws on the life of Weary Dunlop. And you and I were talking a minute ago and, and we were saying that um, that it's interesting that of all the scrapes Australia's been involved in as a country, probably the most celebrated war hero was a doctor, Sir Weary Dunlop. What do you think, um, tell us a little bit maybe about Dorigo Evans as a character and then on Weary Dunlop, what do you think it might say about Australia that we, we've plucked him from the ranks? Well, uh, that's two very distinct questions <laughs> and uh, because they're two utterly yep. different people. Um, really, Dorigo Evans, um, as, as Flaubert said, Madame Bovary same moi, Dorigo Evans same moi. He's, um, he's an invention composed of many parts um, and all of them, I, I suppose, refracted through the prism of my own soul. The, um, his early story is very much my father's early story, growing up um, the child of illiterates in a, in a, a remote Tasmanian country town. Um, his war story is similar to um, uh, Weary Dunlops because my father was one of Dunlops thousand that near now near mythical group but Dunlop was only one of um, a number of extraordinary uh, doctor leaders of the prisoners of war and they all performed very similarly that they're extraordinary um, self-sacrificing courageous um, uh, and they were um, uh, revered by their men, both at the time and afterwards. Uh, Dunlop simply became the most famous of them, and um, he was an extraordinary figure. But uh, the post-war life I invented for um, Dorigo Evans is um, is a fiction, and uh, and I guess really the, the the point that really distinguishes Dorigo Evans from Weary Dunlop is Weary Dunlop is too extraordinary a character for fiction. Mm. His, his feats, um, which we were discussing earlier, were, were so remarkable, so outlandish, that to uh, put them in a novel um, would invite the criticism of both um, absurdity, sentimentality, over-dramatisation. But, but I guess um, we invented God to explain the miraculous truth of ourselves as human beings, but uh, a poor novelist like me has to make do with um, the plausibility of believable lies, and uh, so I invented Dorigo Evans. Your second question as to why uh, has Weary Dunlop become such a figure, I think has a lot to do with who we are as Australians, um, rather than who Weary Dunlop was. Every society, every history throws up a, a myriad of um, characters, achievements, but it is interesting that other cultures choose warrior heroes to explain war to them. Uh, we found a man who um, was a doctor and whose courage manifested itself in um, uh, 
standing up for others in situations of the greatest um, adversity, uh, distress and misery. Uh, I think one of his men said that he was a, a lighthouse of rationality in a, in a, a world gone entirely mad. Um, another said that um, we knew if Weary went under, we'd all go under. Um, he speaks to something about us as Australians, um, something about our communal instincts, which still, even to this day, seem stronger than perhaps some other societies. And yet he also speaks um, to a non-conformity um, that masquerades as authority. So he's a very strange and paradoxical figure but I think he is a story that will continue to grow. Um, and, um, and it's a good story for us to continue to think about and explore. Finally, can I ask you about the war in which your novel is set, the Second World War? I know when I was growing up, um, the Second World War loomed quite large, I think, in Australian memories of, of our history. My father, um, my father also was a Second World War veteran, so it was very important to me. But, it seems to me in the last couple of decades that it's been overshadowed somewhat in our official remembrances um, by the First World War. Is there, does that balance need to be redressed, do you think? Well, it's not whether it should be redressed. I mean, the, the, the history of it is, is that political decisions were made um, to um, celebrate uh, the First World War as the great founding myth of um, Australia. It was made first by the Hawke government and later um, by the Howard government. Um, so these were conscious political decisions about how our history would be divined. Um, interestingly, Paul Keating um, took a different position, which was the Second World War was the, really the point at which modern Australia begins. Um, personally, um, I think um, the, the, the idea that the Second World War is when modern Australia comes into being in which its, its true origins begin. It's when it um, withdraws from the, the English Imperium and sets up an alliance with um, I guess a, a new Imperium, that of America. But that's going to be the defining relationship until now, even with the new tensions uh, we have with our relationship with China. Um, it was when we first engaged with Asia um, it is when we come to understand whether we wish to or not that we're going to be part of Asia. And it's when also um, the, ruling, uh, the ruling classes here come to recognise that, that Australia must modernise and, and must reinvent itself, that it couldn't exist as a sort of, um, you know, just an outstation of English commerce and English culture. So I do think in, in every sense um, the Australia we're in now is a consequence of the Second World War rather than of the First, which really is um, a, a, an extraordinarily tragic and, and, and the largest tragedy Australia has ever endured um, since, um, since uh, Europeans arrived. Um, but it, it, it speaks, the First World War speaks to the past, the Second World War speaks to our future. Richard Flanagan, thank you very much for visiting Bly Street, for visiting the Lowy Institute. Congratulations on your book and good luck with it. Thank you very much for having me.